presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are NC. It's the longest and probably most important homestand of the season for the Royals. Nine games over the next 10 days against three hot American League teams. First up, the division leading Cleveland Indians, who lead Kansas City by eight games. But the Royals are at home, where they play their best baseball, and they will need to as this significant nine game stretch begins right now. It was a hot day in Kansas City where now we come to you from Kauffman Stadium for game one of this three game series between the Cleveland Indians and the Kansas City Royals. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hi everybody I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Rex Hudler. The Royals have played very well at home this year. They're 29 and 13 at Kauffman Stadium and they have to keep that make that continue because they have three tough tests on this homestand. Yet the Royals will find out after this nine games fizz where they stand exactly. Now it's not the end of the season for sure. There's plenty of games left but these teams are going to be tough on the Royals. They absolutely know it and especially the Angels when they come in they may not be first place like these other two teams. But look every team in Major League Baseball has presents its if its difficulties and its challenges especially from the starting pitching. Well let's take a look at those three opponents Cleveland first then Texas and then the Angels Cleveland in first place Texas in first place in the West and then the Angels they won seven of their last ten ball games and they swept the Royals earlier in their house this year so look it's nothing's going to be easy but the Royals are going to find out their identity and what they're made of but home is the place where it's good they love the home cooking here the fans they feed off that energy and hopefully it'll happen tonight against Corey Kluber. Well Rex tonight is law enforcement night and you know fans our country has really been in pain because of the tragedies that have taken place recently in Orlando Dallas and Baton Rouge. The Royals family is keeping those families who are hurting in their thoughts and prayers tonight as they said law enforcement night. We will have a moment of silence and right now let's go to public address announcer Mike McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Cleveland Indians and Kansas City Royals in a moment of silence for all of the first responders who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, including those police officers involved in Dallas and Baton Rouge recently. Thank you. Now we request that you please remove your hats and place your right hand over your heart or render a salute if you're a veteran of the United States military as we pay respect to our flag and country and honor America with the performance of our national anthem. Our Royals fans got talent participant Kansas City Kansas police officer Dustin Derenfeld. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight and the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that a flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the
It's law enforcement night at the K. We're paying respects to Brand Lancaster, a Kansas City police officer who lost his life. There's Eric Hosmer along with Mike Moustakas talking with his daughters, Brianna and Jillian, and then they will throw out the first pitch. They're the daughters of Kansas City, Kansas police officer Brad Lancaster, who again lost his life in the line of duty. And uh, we salute that family and all suffering at this most difficult time around America. When we come back, we'll talk baseball about the Cleveland Indians. Terry Francona brings to Kaufman Stadium the number one pitching staff in the American League with all five starters in the top 20 in earned run average. They are our Toyota League leaders. That's right. Hey, look, we all knew before the season started that the Cleveland Indians had this pitching staff because they were intact last year. And so far, they've been injury free. And look at those numbers as advertised. When we come back, we'll talk Kansas City starting pitcher Edinson Volquez. That's next.
Edinson Volquez will make his 20th start of the year, hoping he throws like he did back on June 13th when he shut out the Tribe in seven innings of a 2-1 to -one Royals victory. That's right. The Royals are 8-3 and three in his home starts this season. Eddie, stay steady. Corey Kluber goes for Cleveland. First pitch is next. with a record of 54 and 37 and eight game lead over the world champion Royals. Cleveland will start things with Santana Kipnis and Lindor. All three have been hot and Mike Napoli hitting 249. This guy has been a leader 63 RBIs this year. Yeah he's leading the team. He's been to postseason him and Juan Uribe. A couple of veteran guys that have been there and done it have really made a, a difference to those players that they're playing with. Volquez. With an ERA of 4.85, but a lot of those runs were given up two starts ago where he really labored, giving up 12 runs in an inning plus. But since then, he has thrown well. And he delivers strike one to Carlos Santana, a 257 hitter with 20 home runs and 51 driven in. Oh, yeah. That two seam fastball and that curveball there, those are nice combinations that he uses, and he hasn't even brought in his changeup. We'll give him a little time to do that. Fastball, curveball, change. That two and four seam combination off of this fastball can really give hitters fits, especially since once it's moving down like that. Right there on the inside corner at 93 miles an hour, he gets the strikeout of Carlos Santana on just three pitches. Well, Santana. He's always amongst the league leaders in walks. Volquez knew he'd be up there eyeballing. He went right to him and Santana, you got to go. Right after him. Now he'll face an all star in Jason Kipnis, who made his second all star appearance. He's been extremely hot lately. 13 hits in his last 28 at bats to raise his average to 280. And there's that good two seamer on the inside corner. He's one of their most important leaders on their team, Jason Kipnis. Solid both sides, defensively and with a bat. Volquez, that two seamer, it's working magic. And it's a good thing because so far this season, Volquez has allowed 15 runs in the first inning. A 6.66 ERA is going to have to change that. So far, so good.
Well, he looks mighty good early as he goes off speed and gets his second strikeout on a swing from Kipnis. Our Golden Oak lending keys to the game for Hutt. That's right. Get Kluber an Uber. That's right. Get him <laughs> one. Eight runs allowed last time out against the Royals. And they can do it again, but they've got to see him up. Now, when they score four more runs in Volquez's start, we like their chances for the W. 21 and 3. Now, Lindor, the talented young man out of Puerto Rico, hitting 301. One of the best young shortstops in the game. And that is the first pitch that is missed from Volquez. Can't believe he threw a ball. Get the pin up. Fouled off one ball, one strike. That's a little like yesterday when Michael Fulmer came out through seven strikes and seven pitches in the first inning, and then Ventura matched him in the first, in the bottom of the first, with seven of his eight pitches thrown for strikes. That ball ripped down the right field line. And it is gone, a home run. It just barely made it around the foul pole. Wow, he has absolutely demolished Kansas City in his career and hitting over 460 this year against Kansas City. 11th homer of the season, and that ball was hit so hard we could barely even see it leave. Fastball got a, had a really nice uppercut swing on it. That two seamer he's been throwing to the previous two hitters. Lindor figured it out. But it was belt high rather than down around the knees. So one nothing Cleveland. And now Mike Napoli he'll take strike one. That was the 90th home run given up by Kansas City starting pitchers this year. Cleveland Indians offense they've been averaging 4.96 runs per game. That's almost five runs a game. And when your starting staff is only giving up a 3.57 ERA, I'm not much in the math business, but you're going to win your share of games when you're scoring runs for that pitch. A little bit low. Two balls, one strike. How about our Ford defense, Hud? Yeah, the Royals there, solid as ever. Escobar, he's been their Iron Man. He started in every single game this season. Now, currently, per fangraphs.com, the Royals are currently 20, plus 25 defensive runs saved. That's tied for second best in the American League behind the Astros, who are plus 32. So defense has been good. Napoli, another hot member of the tie, drive with a six game hit streak, nine hits in his last 21 times up. He'll get a lot of strikeouts. His batting average will be around 250, but a lot of home runs and a lot of clutch base hits. Great low ball hitter. Center field, Dyson right there. He makes the catch, but Lindor goes deep, and Cleveland takes the early 1 0 lead.
Gore has played in 11 games against Kansas City this year, has seven extra base hits. Man, he has been impressive. Here is the Royals' batting order Escobar, Hosmer, Morales, Perez, Gordon, Cuthbert, Orlando, and Merrifield back in there. Yeah, good to see Whit Whitley getting another opportunity. Hopefully, he can get hot against Corey Kluber. Gerard Dyson, they'd like to see him get on base, add a little bit of speed, maybe a steal or two. Here is Kluber's numbers at home against the Royals. 1.43 ERA back at Progressive Field, but here at Kauffman Stadium, an ERA over five. Go figure. Well, he's had issues here, and I can tell you his last time out, he cruised the first few, two or three or four innings, and then the Royals got him late. And this is more of a pitcher's ballpark than his Progressive Field. Certainly is. But you know, he's got great stuff. But the Royals offense have to look up. Forget those pitches that are below the knees and down because you know that they're, they're, they're not they don't have the ability to lift those pitches. You see it high and let it fly. He'll throw that two seamer more than the four seamer right. That's right. He's go going more sinker. And then there it is there. But. You know his velocity is not quite what it used to be but you know you don't need that when you have that type of ability to spin that ball and put it right where you want it. Kluber, there it is. Sinker, cut fastball, four seamer, curve change. He's got all kinds of pitches, but he knows where to put them, and that's the whole key to successful pitching up here in the big leagues. Fouled off. Roberto Perez is the starting catcher in there because of the injury suffered by Jan Gomes. But Perez, a very capable catcher, he's the guy who took over last year when Gomes was injured for a little more than a month early in the season. And the entire pitching staff struggled with him on the sideline last year. They went 10 and 16, and the ERA went up a full run. Yeah, it's a tremendous blow for them. It's a breaking ball swung on and missed our University of Kansas hospital injury report. This was yesterday. At first, it looked like he hurt his knee, he grabbed his knee, but it was his shoulder that he separated and could be done for the year. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you, he's a valuable part of their team. But you know what I liked? The guy's been struggling all year, but he hustled. He's hustling in to first base there. This is a catcher working hard, trying to help his team and try to get out of the way of the throw and land on the shoulder. Tough break. And Perez, who was on the disabled list, was activated just today. So they were fortunate to get a guy who was their backup last year. And now he takes over in the everyday role. Just like any other team that experiences injuries to your star players, you've got to have somebody else come up and fill it up. Cutters, breaking balls. Wow, he says Haas went on that. And that certainly has been the case with the Royals losing Mike Mustakis for the entire season with the knee injury. And still Lorenzo Kane sideline. Yeah, he went. He did. Couldn't quite lay off at Kluber so far in his very few pitches. Looks like he has some excellent snap to his breakers. Fastball missed high. You have to zone him up and out over the plate and hope that he hits that zone. And if he does hit that zone, you can't miss it. Try to tease Hosmer high didn't bite three one count. Cutter slider combination. It's not a big breaker but it does have some late movement. Curves got a little, lot more depth to it. Full count. Center fielder Tyler Naquin will take care of the drive by Hosmer and two out. He almost misjudged that. That ball was hit on the line. Almost played that into a triple. Defensively, the Cleveland Indians. Roberto Perez, you just mentioned it, getting his fifth start this season. It's a good signal caller, has a decent arm. 
and he's good enough. They hope to get the job done for the tribe this year. Now the Indians they're just minus one in defensive run save that's 16th in Major League Baseball so the overall their defense is not saving a lot of runs. Here is Kendris Morales a 257 hitter. Toughest ball to judge is that liner. Look at that. Haas barreled it. Naquin started in and then went back and pulled in. Made a nice recovery. A lot of that damage was done in the month of June where he was the Royals player of the month. Kendris with just six hits in his last eight games and no extra base hits. Need his presence in the middle of their order. He cooled off some. And again, get a little bit more aggressive swinging at pitches that are not his pitch. Now Kluber walks him to face Salvador Perez. It's just his 28th walk in 122 innings. Not too bad. He's pretty much a strike thrower. Now, with no runners on base from his windup, the opponents are only hitting 185 out of him. But with runners on, the opponents are hitting 278. So he's not quite as effective from the stretch. Let's see if Salvi can make him pay here for the walk. Sal really got to Corey Kluber back on June 15th when Kluber gave up a career high tying eight runs in a Kansas City nine to four victory. Sal jumped him to center field. Yep, there it was on the outer half. Didn't try to pull it. He went with it and Salvi has plenty of pop. To get it out of here, the K at 410 plus. I love this moment with Lorenzo Cain, who's yeah. saying, I, "I'm still looking for where that ball went." Yeah, that was good. Uh, that was a great moment for Sally. But it just goes to show you, you know, this ballpark. You hear all the talk about, you know, hitters saying, "Well, it's big yard, hard to hit homers." But for Salvador Perez, he can hit one anywhere in this park. He's had difficulty with Kluber in the past. Morales with a two out walk. He and Mike Napoli at one time teammates with the Angels. He went and Kluber gets the strikeout. He has two in the inning. We head to the second with the Indians leading KC 1 0.
as the lead tonight's Indians Royals game is being broadcast on AFN the American Forces Network broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea. Welcome guys. Including Captain Will Fox. He's out on an aircraft carrier in the Pacific. Yes. Thank you guys for your hard work. Cleveland Indians fans and Kansas City Royals fans. Battle of the Central. This is a guy who many would consider the MVP of the Cleveland Indians. The job that he has done. Jose Ramirez plays every position. And look at the numbers. 41 RBIs for a guy who is batted in every slot in their lineup. One out. Everybody knows that you got to play well in your division, especially the Royals. They know well about that over the last few seasons as they've gone to the mountaintop. They've had good records in their own division. The Cleveland Indians, they're doing that this season. Look what they are against the Central. They're, they're very tough, especially at 10 and 1 record against the Detroit Tigers. That is our Kia in the driver's seat. 28 and 12 against the AL Central. Now Lonnie Chisholm Hall. Yeah, Chisholm Hall, he's been good this year. Didn't have him early in the season. He had an injury, but now he's been coming back, hitting right at 300. Yeah, hitting 354 his last 20 games to bring that average up from 280 to just a tick under 300. Pulls most of his hits. He's a pull hitter, and he will take off speed the opposite field when he's down in the count. He's looking to pull heavy early. See on the right side over here, they got a little small triangle over here. They're going to play that defense, but he's a little like Alex Gordon, where he came up as a third baseman and they moved him to the outfield. A pop up on the infield. Merrifield, two out. Volquez's his last start was July 8th when he beat Seattle five to three and had a quality start gave up three runs in six innings. Yeah you know what if you hold a team down to three runs right at three runs you should be able to score enough to win depending on their the opponent obviously but Volquez when he gets his pitches working and staying down in that strike zone like he, that yeah he's using his defense strikeouts. They're not heavy this year on his side. He's got he had 85 coming in and 111 in the third innings. And so that tells me he's not going for strikeouts. He's just pitching to contact. You know he's one guy who really has a lot of fun on the mound. Well sure he, he enjoys competing. This guy he's the same no matter what. Uh, even on the day he pitches every fifth day a lot of pitchers they won't talk to you they're in their own little world on that fifth day but not him he smiles he's the same way same guy all the time and it's just different styles for different guys I remember Rex the game after he gave up the 12 runs in one plus inning he got to the first without allowing a run in his next start and he went into the dugout and he got high fives and he was raising his arms to the sky saying thank you I got through the first I mean he pitches with such joy I mean, you know that that outing he came off of was historically low well he strikes out Juan Uribe a solid second inning when we come back Alex Gordon will be leading things off KC.
first inning home run by Francisco Lindor have the one nothing lead here in the bottom of the second Alex Gordon on a really warm evening in Kansas City will lead things off. Good crowd on hand for game one of this important three game set. Huh? It's a Monday night fizz. The place is packed. Love it. That's exactly what these fans come to the K for to see winning baseball. That's what they want to see. Royals second best home record 29 and 13. And that's what's been amazing HUD averaging five runs per game in a pitcher's ballpark then on the road averaging only three runs per game. Yeah it's hard to figure Fizz but we're on the road. I mean we're at home now for nine next nine days. I didn't want to hear about the road. <laughs> Let's just get her done here. Uber jumps in ahead of Alex Gordon 0 2. Buries one in the dirt. One of his rare off speed pitches. All seven of Alex's home runs have been hit off of right handers. So Alex Gordon working on uh, thinking about the opposite field would be a good time here now. They're playing him dead pull. Just low. You can see that they're all over there. All every guy up there is on it and they are trying to cover that whole side of that infield. Alex has the ability to go to left field. But he needs a hit over there. Just to give him a little extra confidence. But they're trying to pound him in. Instead he goes with that sinker at 93 and gets his third strikeout. Kluber's ball is exploding. It's got all kinds of movement tonight. Making it tough for those hitters to find a spot, pick it out, and not miss it. Now, Chesler Cuthbert, this is another guy, if you include both his time at Omaha and his time in the big leagues, he has over 55 RBIs. And he smacks this one to right center. Naquin misread it, and the ball will drop in between. The right fielder and the center fielder. Tyler took two steps back and then came in, and by then it cost him. Not just a single. They made it close anyway, but sometimes it's not how hard you hit it, it's where you hit it. And Nick, when he, you, you're right, Biz, he, he didn't come directly in on that ball. He had a tough read. You see him in center field, he kind of started to his left. But that, that ball had eyes on it. Now Paulo Orlando. He has been the Royals Honda most trusted against the American League Central this year. Check out these numbers. Yeah, impressive the way he stays in the middle of the field better than any Royals hitter. He's a, a guy who thinks middle, and when he sees his pitch, he doesn't miss it. And usually he's aggressive early in the counts. Goes right after him. He's picking things up of late. Seven hits in his last 22 at bats, and that came right after an 0 for 18 skid he'd been in. Trying to tie this game. Well, you know, Ned wasn't playing him as much. And I think he's heard some rumblings about the fact that he only has one home run all season. It's that one sharply on one hop to Lindor. They get one and two, and the inning is over. And that is the 12th double play turned behind Corey Kluber this year.
Stadium Indians still on top, one nothing. Joel Goldberg down by the Royals dugout, and still the status quo for Lorenzo Cain, but he continues to get his work in, as we see in our premier Mazda game break, doing that work earlier today with Rusty Kuhn. So along with the running drills and the hitting that he's been doing, a chance for Lorenzo to get out there and work on some of that outfield defense and test out that hamstring. But Nedio saying still not a lot of change yet, and. As I mentioned to you guys yesterday, or uh, to Hud, to you and Ryan yesterday, they're not going to push him. They're not going to mess with that hamstring. And Hud, Hud, you said that's a that's a spot in the body that can lie to you a little bit. So they're going to be careful. Yeah, but I love seeing him doing some really short work out there, stopping, turning, doing some things like that. That look, if if that hammy was was grabbing him at all, he wouldn't be doing that. So this is a good sign to see Locaine out there, just easing in. And had it was interesting most of the work that he took with Rusty was in right field not center field. Well they obviously have plans and they might want him to play out there in right field when he comes back. Any field will be good to have Locaine in it. There's a line drive base hit to right field by Tyler Naquin. First time either team has had their leadoff man on. Sandy Alomar the first base coach talking with Naquin who is a first round pick in 2012 out of Texas A&M. Naquin's fit in nicely with their team. Young rookie hitting over 300. Ten homers. This guy's finding his stroke. Now Roberto Perez. He's the young man who broke his right thumb and ligament damage at a play at the home plate back on April 30th. That was in a game at Philadelphia. And he is squaring to bunt, but then takes a ball. Cuthbert will stay in at third. Hosmer, of course, holding Naquin at first, and Tyler does have three steals this year. That's been caught once. You might want to play it safe. Perez not having many at bats. Just See if he can move him over. See if he does it again. Decided to swing, and Volquez has a 2 0 count. Now, Roberto Perez is one of those rare guys who doesn't play that much and yet extremely patient. A lot of guys coming off the bench, they want to swing the bat. He had 33 walks last year in only 70 games, and not all of those 70 were starts. Got some play discipline. Three and zero. Oh. This is a guy they need to get because you turn the lineup. Santana, Kipnis, Lindor, Napoli all have been hot. And they are looming. Ball four. Ball four. Join the Royals and local business professionals for Business Day at the K this Wednesday, presented by Tierney Office Products. The event will feature a pregame presentation by Royals General Manager Dayton Moore, networking opportunities and snacks, and then, of course, stay to cheer your Royals on as they take on these Indians. Visit royals.com slash business for more information and to purchase tickets for this great event. Two on, nobody out. Can't let the bottom of the order beat you. And the 8 9 guys get on. And here is Santana, who has always hurt the Royals. 331 average at Kauffman Stadium with 13 home runs in this ballpark. Well, he didn't swing the bat at all his first time up. Got him on three straight strikes. He's taken the whole way. He's be looking to pull here. Good pitch there by Volquez. Two seamer, hard and firm. That's what he gave him first time through. Overall, Cleveland Indians hitting 253 with runners in scoring position as a team. Carlos Santana hit 264. Two fifty three is middle of the pack in the American League. And Rex, nothing real special. I'm not predicting. I'm just telling you information. There have been four triple plays turned this season. One by the Milwaukee Brewers, three by the Chicago White Sox, which is absolutely 
unbelievable. Really? Why not one by the Royals? Are you calling a triple play? No, I said I'm just handing out information. That would be a beautiful thing. Easiest one is the is the two hopper to Cuthbert at third steps on the bag and goes around the horn. Now, I don't know Santana. He's a full hitter. You were the middleman in a 5 4 3 double play turn when Jim Abbott was on the mound. I remember that in Minnesota. Yep. Thing was the scary thing was is I thought my out was the, was the third out and I'm going oh no what am I going to do and I just turned it over anyway and ended up being a triple play. You're a liar because oh. I did the game and mm. you snapped it over there very quickly. Oh man I, that was nerve wracking. But Edison uh, trying to be careful. Three for 19 is Santana with a couple of homers in his career off of Volquez. Dead pull. A little bit of center. That works, but he's looking to turn and burn. 20 home runs out of your leadoff hitter, not too shabby. The reason he's hitting up there this year is Francona likes his on base percentage. The fact that he walks. Be able to get on, set up the table. Could see him casting, trying to trying to pull that, casting with his top hand. Coming around and trying to hit that hole. Well, Merrifield, he's way over. Yeah, he doesn't have the kind of swing that he's gonna hit it to the third baseman like you talked about. No, oh, no. See how he's really throwing that top hand out there, trying to pull it. That'll get out of play. He's ground into eight double plays this season. Santana. Volk has his induced nine. Royals have received good starting pitching after the break despite losing two of three in Detroit Kennedy Duffy and Ventura only gave up seven total runs in 18 and two thirds innings. In the air left side Alex positions his body to make the throw to third and brings it to Escobar no advance. Here's a lane ball candidate. He leads the team in rounding into double plays with 12. Kipnis. Naquin singled, Perez walked. Strike one. Hot day in Kansas City, cooling off right now. Sun setting in the west, so a lot of fans and the shadows. Comfortable for the kids. Try to get him to chase that curve. And our Current temperature 90 degrees, but feels like 97 if you're in the sunshine. So just that little corner up there, HUD. Yeah. Hey, look. It's toasty. Steve Pizziak, Rex Hudler, Joel, and Jeff Montgomery with you. That ball popped up left side, and Gordon's right there again. Barely had to move. Two out. Well, Francisco Lindor came up with two out in the first inning and jumped it down the right field line. Just barely Boy, stayed fair. Sure did. But I tell you, he stayed inside of that ball nicely with his bottom hand and that top hand release. Watch him. Gets a little bit of momentum going back. He's still got his weight on this back foot right here. 
And then as he steps, watch his head. The head stays right here even. He pulls it in. And watch the top hand release. Comes right off. Picture perfect. Beautiful swing. Boy, he has had the Royals number in his young career. This is his first full season, but he came up midway last year and hurt the Royals in several games. Strike one. Our Kubota power stats show you that in his career and certainly this year, now that he's hitting over 460 against KC this year, but 392 in his career. Mm -hmm. Man. Look at the extra base hits. Yeah. 23 RBIs in 21 games. Are you kidding me? He's a tough out. And this is just his second season in the majors. Tremendous talent. Hit third in a big league order. To Escobar. That's quite a job by Eddie Volquez. Eight, nine hitters get on. Nobody out. Santana, Kipnis, Lindor out. Andy Agostino are sitting in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat. Now, Chris has worked with the Kansas City Fire Department for 20 years, serving at many stations throughout the city, also a paramedic. He has delivered two babies while on duty, has worked many long hours, including with the Advanced Life Support Pumpers Program and received a unit citation for a rescue. He worked at Worlds of Fun. Way to go, Chris. Yeah. And Sean has served the Grandview Fire Department for the last 10 years, known for his ability to remain calm and level-headed. This was most evident when another firefighter was trapped in a burning building and he selflessly climbed a ladder and reached through the window to save him. Fizz, love the detail on Chris and Sean. Fellas, thank you so much for what you do and continue to do. Hey, Hud, do you remember Cleo, who was in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat about a month ago? Sure. Cleo's like, I think, 90, 91 years old. And uh, we talked about her, and her story was amazing. And then both of us were leaving that night after the game, and we ran into Cleo. And we had such a, a wonderful experience. She sent us. Two dozen eggs today. 12 for you and 12 for me. There's Merrifield to third. And it is a close play, but out at first. Yeah, Cleo, we want to say thank you for thinking of us. But, you know, to sit in that Buck O'Neill seat, what an honor that is. And it's a very, it's, it's a special part of the game here in the, in the K. Whenever we have that guest, we love to talk about it. Now, Uribe, ball's moving. It's not an easy play, but this veteran, he knows he's done that many a times. Makes a nice play on a speedy runner. Now Dyson. A little high for ball one. Gerard's been seeing high fastballs in his starts because they don't want him to hit the ball on the ground and use his speed. 
Hits that one pretty well, Lonnie and it's okay. over the head of Lonnie Chisenhall. And Dyson off to the races. A triple for Dyson. That's right. They pitch him up, look up, and don't miss it. Dyson, after taking that first pitch, sees another two-seamer. That's belt high, and he catches it with a good short swing. He had a little top-hand release on that ball, and they were playing him shallow, showing him no respect. Now, if Chisholm Hall bobbles that or any kind of problem there, that could have been inside the parker. But with one out, Dyson at third base, very important that they get this run home. Looks like the defense is going to play straight up the middle. They're going to play back. So any any little ground balls in this direction right here can score that run. So Escobar wants to keep it away from the corners and use the middle of the field here and get that run home. Even if it's on and out. Strike one. Now Escobar has been pretty good in this situation this year. He has scored that runner 11 out of 18 times. How many chances you're going to get off a pitcher like Kluber, and his stuff looks good tonight. Ooh, and he struck him out on that pitch to open at the bottom of the first. You see how he's on the side of that ball, and he can spin it. He spins it with the best of them. Puts it where he wants it. And then he waves at one that was not a strike. Four strikeouts for Kluber. Well, he didn't want to, you know, he's not going to give you anything if he if he knows that you're going to swing at it. Why would he why would he throw a ball down the middle for you? Well, he can sense it. He knows Escobar thought it ball hit the ground, but it didn't. How do you think they'll approach Eric Hosmer? Well, they're going to be real careful with him here. You can, you can see that little meeting they have Roberto Perez, the catcher, coming out there. Well, well, I think what Haas has to do is hit it out, take the lead. That way they only play eight and a half innings so he can go to a birthday party. <laughs> well, Haas would like that now. Eric Hosmer does have three home runs in his career off of Kluber. They're going to tie him up, try to pitch him in. Ball one. Yeah, I get the feeling they don't want any part of them. They're going to be careful with him, that's for sure. Now, Corey Kluber has thrown four wild pitches this year. No, well, so anything bouncing, Dyson will look to take advantage of it. Yeah, he is no longer throwing to his good friend Jan Gomes on the disabled list. Look at how far they're coming in on him. Yeah, they want to anyway. His career against Kluber 12 hits including three home runs. Well, he's, he knows now. In there looks like Hodge was taken all the way. Good spot. You can see outfielders Nate went over here. He's playing him a little bit to the pull side. Now most teams play Haas the opposite field in the outfield because he hits for most of his power to left center field. But because they're pitching him and they went over the meeting in the meeting before the game where they're going to pitch him. They're playing him to pull. And you know with Kluber and, and most of the starters on the Cleveland Indians. They can put that ball right where they want it. That's why they've been so good. These guys don't miss. And if they do, you got to make them pay. Carrasco. They got the best starting staff in the American League. And he misses inside, almost an intentional walk. To Hosmer and the Royals will have runners on first and third, but the guy who led the team in RBIs last year is stepping to the plate and Kendris Morales. Well, you know, that's Kluber was smart there. He, he was pitching around one of the most productive hitters on the Royals lineup. So you gotta like that. Now and he also knows what Morales is doing against him and not a whole lot. So 
he was going to take his chances with Hosmer. Now, that's one of the reasons why you have Morales hitting behind Hosmer because he's such a, a threat and he's got such a power bat that you want to give Hosmer protection. So you make him pay for it right here. Got it him. looks like they got Hendris Morales in the foot. He'll limp to first base as they got him on the back foot. And the Royals will have him loaded with two out for Salvador Perez. That sounded a little funny, and sure enough, it was. It hit off of his toes. Ouch. So let's see now if the Royals can make him pay with two outs and them loaded up. Now the Royals this year with the bases loaded have had some difficulty. They're hitting 260, no slams, and not one extra base hit. That I found surprising. They've, they've got to change that. So far this year with the bases loaded, just 13 for 50, all singles. You know the other team struggling with the bases loaded? Cleveland, and they're in first place. All one. Perez hit a home run at the All-Star game to give Corey Kluber the victory. Kluber pitched the top of the second inning. And then Hosmer and Perez went deep. Kluber got the win. They don't really need an extra base hit. They would love to see it. But look, a lousy single would suit them fine. And he punches that towards the first base side, but foul. That got right in on the hands, and I think Sal may have broken his bat. It's a big point in the game for Kluber. He knows it. So he's talking it out with Perez, wanting to make sure that he doesn't tries not to make a mistake but when you try to pitch fine like that and you're trying to aim it sometimes you do make a mistake. Salvador Perez has been swinging a good bat lately. Ten hits in his last seven games including two home runs. They were big ones in that Seattle series. Rolls it towards third. Long run for a rebound. His toss is in time. And the inning ends on a 5 3 ground out. Mm. Nice job of wiggling out of it by Kluber.
first base coach Rusty Coons told me that at the All-Star game, he was talking to Lindor, and he said, you know, I love the energy you guys have, the aggressiveness, the way you run the bases. Where did it come from? What was the change? And Lindor told Rusty, this is all because of Mike Napoli, the guy that's at the plate right now. He said he has been a lead by example guy. You need to pick me up, he'll give it to you. You need that little kick or that push, he'll be there for that. The hug, the call you out, whatever it might be, Mike Napoli has been a huge impact, made a huge impact on this team. And I like the story, guys. And they're a great play on the catch by Chesler Cuthbert to Rob Napoli. But HUD, you've seen this before. Opening day, 30 degrees. Guys are complaining that it's too cold. And Napoli comes out in the short sleeve shirt and says, this is ridiculous. I wish that it were even colder. Yeah. And he's from Florida. That's right. Mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. Cuthbert says, you know what? Look, you hit it at me, you're out. Catches it on the fly. He says it's way hotter than this in Nicaragua. That's right. Although Chesler, I did, I was talking with him before the game today. And he said, Phew, it is a hot one today. <laughs> of course, in batting practice, you know, that heat index is up over 100. Now you remember what it was like when they had artificial turf at Old Royal Stadium? Oh, it was brutal. Through like 130 degrees. Oh, maybe hotter even. I remember Frank White showing me the bottom of his feet, and there were burn marks. His spikes. It was so hot. Yeah, in St. Louis, Ozzy Smith and the boys used to sit, used to stand in buckets and trays of ice because the, the metal spikes would burn right through the soles of their cleats and their, their feet, man. It was, I've never seen that before. You look like the kind of guy who would wear a cabbage leaf on his head. I, I saw some ball players do that. Yeah, nah. That wasn't <laughs> my style, but look. You ate worms. Come yeah. on, it is your style. Yeah, but if you if you steal a couple of bases and you're active in a game that's 140 on that turf, you're going to have some hydration issues, dehydration. I remember coming out to, off the field, I was dizzy, and they put me in there and put put those ice bags on my veins and my neck and my arms, and just needed to take a little chill pill because it's not healthy that type of heat. A full count with Volquez to Ramirez. Check swing did not go. And that's a base on ball second walk issued by Volquez. Fans we want you to hang out with your friends at the K this Wednesday for only ten dollars with your school ID. And this is a great summer fireworks special every Friday home game at Kauffman Stadium from May through August for tickets. Royals.com or call 1 800 6 Royals. We do have a afternoon special on Wednesday, and that will be Ian Kennedy against Carlos Carrasco. Chisholm Hall coming into this game had the best average against Volquez of any of his other teammates at 429. Mm. There's the hydration station. Beautiful part of this ballpark here, that's for sure. Especially on hot days like that. See those fountains going up, it just cools you off. Remember when Cookie Rojas was here, he was telling the story when they finally went to the playoffs. He and Freddie Patek said, if we win, we're going to go jump in there. And they did. And he said, we didn't find out until later it was kind of dangerous. Yeah, you know, that was great that uh, Cookie came up here yeah. to visit with us for a little bit of time. Take us back to the early beginnings of the Kansas City Royals. I tell you, he was a big part on their swing from just being a expansion team to being really good his leadership his toughness at second base his clutch base hits. Runner goes foul back. Oh man. I tell you what Ramirez almost killed himself at, at second base. 
That was one of the worst head first slides I've ever seen. Ooh, man. Looks like he got a mouthful of dirt. Oh man, it's that's that you know it's that sliding pad on his on his left hand that when he started sliding it got caught and, and it's got caught up underneath him and got a little taste of that Kaufman dirt. Does not go this time, and the ball is swung on and lifted foul. Murrayfield continues to sprint over, but it's well back in the seats. Game one of a three game series here at Kauffman Stadium. Then we'll welcome in Texas Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, followed by Mike Trout and the Angels. Center field shallow. That ball will drop and Ramirez read it well and will scoot all the way to third base. Off the bat, there was no chance the Royals were going to field that one. That ball just dropped right in there. Ramirez, with good speed, had no trouble getting to third base. Little jam shot. Told you Jose Ramirez hit one through nine in the lineup. He even hit cleanup, and he said he was so excited about hitting cleanup that he got his phone out, took a picture, and texted it to his parents. See, I'm hitting cleanup for the first place Indians. That's yeah, impressive. Hey, but the kid, he, he's worked at it, Ramirez. Now look at Juan Uribe here. He's he's not going to be an easy out, even though he struggled in situations like this. He's a swinger, man. He 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 hacks. He's not up there looking for a walk. This is his 15th big league season. Won a championship in 2005 with the Chicago White Sox. He was their shortstop for many seasons. Won another one with San Francisco and was with the Mets when the Royals beat them last year to win the 2015 Paul Classic. Yeah, two hit, two-time world champion. He's a a nice addition. The rest of these guys. Mike Napoli has postseason experience. That's what you need. A couple of guys on your roster that have been there and done it. Francona knows that. Terry Francona, he's a, an established manager. He's a two time world champion as well. He knows exactly what he needs for his team. And, you know, God, it's kind of makes you a little bit nervous with this guy managing the tribe, how good they can be. And having been there before, he knows how to handle the late season. Slumps that happen to teams. Foul, and right now he has his all star left fielder Michael Brantley, who is probably the most dynamic offensive and defensive talent that they have on the disabled list, but he's rehabbing and could be back within the month. Yeah, I know, and they're taking it easy with him, too. He's got 39 at bats down there, so, you know, that's a lot of ABs. They're, they're making sure that he's good and ready. They're playing at a high caliber without him. They want to make sure when they get him back, he's going to be their guy. So, the team and your player, you love your manager, Terry Francona. Watch this. Now, I've never seen a Player get away with kissing the forehead of the field general, but man, that tells you a lot right there. Look at him. Oh, and he's returning the favor to his bat. <laughs> That's beautiful. Cuthbert, they get the out, but a run scores. It's 2 0 Cleveland. That's not what Volquez wanted. He wanted him to hit that ball a little bit more firmly. Volquez didn't doing what he wants to keep that ball down. Can't control that. 
eBay's 23rd double, or excuse me, RBI. Naquin singled the right field on the first pitch he saw from Volquez in the third inning. He was left stranded. He swings at the first pitch here. Strike one. Using that a nice little curveball, didn't have a lot of depth to it, but it was located just where he wanted. Aikman got him a pitch inside and down in his first at bat, and drove it to right field for a single. Left that one up, but at 95 miles an hour, the best he could do is foul it back. Naquin is a is a, another young player kind of like what the Royals have had some guys that have come up and filled in and Naquin while Brantley's been out he's been getting an opportunity and Rajai Davis is the other outfielder he's getting a majority of the reps Merrifield throws out Naquin but a run scores and a ground out it's two nothing Cleveland the Royals will have Alex Gordon Chester Cuthbert Paulo Orlando coming up. First on a Lindor home run and then on the ground out when Cleveland scores first they're mighty tough to beat. Our Academy leaderboard shows you that only the Cubs have a better record in the major leagues of 38 and 9 when they score first the Indians at 41 and 12 but the Royals right behind. Well the Royals also are a comeback team. And they'll have to do that tonight. Maybe starting with Alex Gordon here. Strike one. Got their hands full with Corey Kluber. Looks to me like he's executing all of his pitches so far where he wants them. And he's got a lot of movement. Ball is not straight. 18 of the Royals' 46 wins have been come from behind efforts. Kluber, the one guy who has been a veteran in their starting rotation. He was in the All-Star game. We told you the winning pitcher there, but he won the Cy Young Award two years ago, winning 18 games with a 2.44 earned run average. And he strikes out Alex.
time for our sprint trivia. Name the four active American League players with 17 or more home runs in nine straight seasons. All right, now I like that. They they usually they'll put the question out there and then they'll put one of the players on there for me. So that's a shoe in. Mike Napple. He's one of them. Are you sure? No, I'm not, not sure, but I figured our guys out. Most home runs that Napoli has ever had in one season was the 30 he hit for the Texas Rangers back in 2011. Cuthbert to right field and deep and over the head. Chisenhall brings it back and Cuthbert's going for third and Kipnis gets him. The Royals checking to see if Arebe did not snap the tag down in time. Well, you know what? It was a good relay throw by Kipnis, but Chisenhall. Playing very shallow. Let's see if he got. It. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough angle there. Cuthbert, not a bad chance. Ball was hit well over Chisenhall's head. Chisenhall was shallow, so it took him a long time to get there. And they're going to replay this one. Did he get the hand uh, in there? I don't know if it's clear and convincing. The, the Royals will challenge, though. Yep. So Look. Cuthbert staying on third for now. It's tough as it been. Now there's a there's a, a different angle they're showing on the board here at the K now. This is the angle here. Let's see if he doesn't get that hand in there before the tag. No tag yet, no tag, no tag, no tag. I don't know. I don't know if it's clear and convincing. Oh well, we'll have to see. But you know, like I said, tough Corey Kluber tonight. Chances of scoring from third base with less than two outs are much greater than scoring him from second base. So it wasn't a bad chance there by Cuthbert. This is going to be an interesting call here. Okay, check it out. Chisenhall one hands it turns and fires doesn't crow hop gets it in quickly. Kipnis takes it fires a good overhand throw a little bit high and Uribe with the tag. And Uribe, you notice where he was out in front of the base. That's what you want to do. You want to be out in front of the base here so it so you get the ball quicker and you can apply the tag. He's out. So the play goes nine four five two outs. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was clear and convincing enough to have the guys in New York overturn it. Yep. Close. Ned. Mm. We all feel that way. And not that way. Big relay play, and, and it was fundamentally sound. Got him a pitch he could handle there. Talking with Dale Swain before the game. So Dale, how are they going to approach a Kluber? And he says they've got to lay off balls down. You see him up, get him up, and that's where you can put the ball in play and get the ball elevated. So we're swinging a lot of low pitches and we can't lift those. We're, we're hitting them at people and, and we're swinging and missing. Oof. Six strikeouts now for Kluber, and he has shut out the Royals through four.
Lindor went deep with two out in the first inning and Kluber six strikeouts and four shutout innings and they've also made some marvelous defensive plays. All right. Cleveland started with Lindor first inning third hitter he Volquez punched out the first two and then Lindor he opened it up in the fourth inning here Uribe hit a little chopper little two three hopper he got the out at first but then was able to score Ramirez. That's where we stand. So Roberto Perez who walked and Cleveland had runners on first and second in the third inning and then Volquez bowed his neck and got Santana Kipnis and Lindor all out. Didn't mean to do it try to check his swing Perez very patient first time up. Was Cleveland's 33rd round pick in 2008 out of a junior college in Puerto Rico. Man, he has a good eye. Have been so tough to throw a strike to the number nine batter. I don't know, but you can see a little frustration in Volquez there in his body language. Let's get back in count. Go ahead and throw it now. Cleveland getting ready for the third time through. Those are kind of cotton him third time through. Cuthbert got some time. Nice play. Spins a three one out. Fires a good play. Tiger fans join the Royals at the Cave for Mizzou night when the Rangers are in town this Friday. The first 5,000 fans who bring their Mizzou theme night ticket through Gate A will receive a special edition gray, black, and gold branded KC cap, which includes the Mizzou logo, courtesy of Fox Sports Kansas City and Rally House. Visit Royals.com slash theme tickets or call 1-800-6-ROYALS to get your tickets today. That's also fireworks night. So you get to see fireworks and wear a Mizzou cap. How about that baby. Beautiful. I if this is her first baseball game. I hope it is. Hope she can get us a win. Santana struck out looking on three pitches in the first and then flied out with runners in first and second. Nobody out in the third. One ball, two strikes. And he has a 14 game hit streak. It's interesting, HUD. He is not your prototypical leadoff guy, but because of his keen eye and ability to get on base and an on base percentage. Terry Francona has him at the top of the order. Yep, he's fifth in the American League in walks, 50. They like him getting on base. Three and two, very selective. Routine play by Sandy Alomar. Outside ball four. Third walk issued by Volquez. Our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. It's about Ichiro who had a terrific game at St. Louis yesterday. Now six hits shy of 3,000 in his big league career. 
looking to become the 30th member. Now he's over one in Philadelphia tonight. How about that? Amazing. You know, he takes great care of himself. I knew that he had a chance to pile up some hits, but I didn't realize or think that he could get to 3,000 after playing six or seven years in Japan. But you know, the Cardinal fans treated him like he was a home player. They were cheering for him. He said after the game through an interpreter that he really appreciated the Cardinal fans and them pulling for him trying to reach that incredible feat. You know it's much like the Kansas City fans when Miguel Cabrera won the Triple Crown a few years ago clinching it here at the K and stadium roared and there's a ground ball Escobar to whip to first and a double play. Yeah. Tenth ground ball double play induced by Eddie. Nice. Bottom of the fifth inning. Tribe still on top, two nothing. All right, you young players out there, watch this tailor-made double play. Look at Escobar. Shows him the ball, flips it over the base, expecting Merrifield to be there. First man, sure. Second man, quick. Got to make sure one before you can get two. And now Witt will lead things off in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Good rip there on the slider out over the middle. Now here it is. See, let him see the ball. Whenever you're transferring that ball for a double play, take the ball out of your glove. The sooner that the guy that's catching the ball can see it, the better chances you have of turning two. Don't try to hide it from him and be quick. Take it out and feed it to him, just like Escobar did. Routine. Good take there on a teasing breaking ball away. Really love to see this young man get going again. Just four hits his last 33 times up. Stay aggressive at the plate. He's dropped off some, but you know what though? He's he's finding out what it's like to be an everyday player in the majors. It's very difficult. See when you're facing that top caliber top shelf pitching every single night now defensively he's been awesome no matter where Ned puts it but that whole thing about hitting is a whole different game. This is the time of night where it's twilight and the ball can get lost up in the sky for the fielders out there. Make sure when you hit one up there that you hustle hard you never know.
popped him up right side. Napoli will make the catch and there's one out. Major League Soccer Sunday sponsored by Audi returns this week with a red hot rivalry. Don't miss when David Villa and the New York City FC battle their crosstown rivals the New York Red Bulls at 1130 in the morning on Fox or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. David Villa. Yeah, way to go. He's good. It's a nice little Spanish name you dropped out there, partner. <laughs> Gerard Dyson triple his first time up. He was at third base with one out, but Escobar struck out Hosmer. Walk Morales was hit by a pitch to load the bases, and then Salvador Perez grounded out. Door. Two out. Yeah. Royals offense going quiet again, HUD. Yep. They're three and ten their last 13 games, and nine times in those 13 games, they've scored three runs or less. Yeah, that, that last at bat, you know, with Dyson at third base and Escobar up. You know, it was a situation there where he really wants to concentrate on a pitch out over the plate and not swing at his pitches, and Kluber got him to swing off the plate. Not once, but twice. And I think the first pitch was the best pitch to swing at, and he took it for strike. He normally swings at those. And then he knocks this one back up the middle. That would have looked nice back in the third. He wasn't waiting around. You know, Escobar has not been running that much lately. And this would be a good time to go. Sure would. Royals running game has pretty much come to a halt. Escobar with 12 stolen bases. But you wonder if they would pitch to Hosmer if he did steal second base. They send him if Haas gets two strikes on him. And that's not to right field. First and second. Ball was tagged. Too bad he couldn't have got underneath that. And Escobar is right at him, so he had to freeze. He had to hold up. Don't want to get hit by the ball, or else he could have been to third base. But there's no need in pushing it with two outs. Royals have a out. He hit the Indians five to three, but they trail it two nothing on a Lindor home run in the first, and a walk, a single, and a ground out by a rebate. Okay, last two Royals hitters aggressive early on Kluber getting that fastball. Down and in slider to Kendris Morales and hit him in the back foot. His last time up. And there's that back foot slider. Yep. 0 2. It's just a little bit over anxious. Wanting to do too much. You got to see it out of his hand. Pick up the release point. Almost looked like he was guess swinging there. And that was our Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. We saw a lot of that early in the season with Morales. And he got hot. He stopped. He started laying off of those pitches. That one was left up a bit. Man, and he's been getting beat up. Kluber hit him on the top of his foot last time up on the top of his toes, and then he fouled that one off of him. Last half bat, it was his back foot. Now this is the top of his front foot. Man, 
and there's no padding there. He's got the sides covered, but there's nothing right there on top. Lots of times after a hitter fouls one off his foot like that, that catcher sees that, and the pitcher, he'll put one back in that same spot again, see if he swings at it. And that hurt him. Swing did he go? Yes, he did, and that is a strikeout. And it's seven now for Corey Kluber. We head to the sixth inning here in Kansas City with the Indians leading the Royals 2 0. A little too aggressive. Chrysler, enjoy your summer in style with great deals at the Chrysler Summer Clearance Event. It turned out to be a beautiful evening here in Kansas City, rather warm day. Even when the sun went down, the heat index was at 97 degrees. It's a great musical group that is featured about that. Called Not a Planet. That's right. Looks like one, though. Sure does. Tommy went right after Francisco Lindor. Lindor took an inside fastball that was about Bells high down the right field line for a home run in the first. Now he's coming back inside with a breaking ball, and it's a one two count. Great pitch. Wow, good breaking ball down and in, swung over the top. Strike one. And that is out number one and strikeout number four. Yeah, excellent spot. You got to beat him. You got to beat him off of the plate. Started him out in there and he finishes him off in there. Had I'm still thinking about that sprint question we asked. What is it? Four big leaguers, 17 or more home runs. What do you think, David Ortiz? That's a good guess. Bobby, how about Edwin Encarnacion? How about Alex Rodriguez? Alex Rodriguez? Well, yeah, but Alex missed the one year because he was suspended. That's right. So I don't know if they would count that. Beltron.
outside corner perfectly located at the knees at 93. Napoli that world championship with Boston helped Texas to the World Series. And that ball sent down the line. How could we, how could we not throw Miguel Cabrera's name out there. You're exactly right. Shame on us. Mickey he hit 18 last year yeah. and it wasn't one of his bigger years. No, but Mike Napoli, dangerous. He goes to his his home run powers to opposite field. Now he'll pull him. He likes. You see Volquez's pitch count there. Not too bad. That's where he goes right there. And he's an excellent breaking ball hitter. So he he thinks that direction, and if it's soft enough and up, he'll try to pull it. The 15th double on the season. You can see this breaking ball, excellent low ball hitter. See the head position, didn't pull it one bit. He's thinking that way, looking that way. Just kind of feathered it out there. Didn't take a huge swing. He went with the pitch. Now Ramirez. Scored the last run with a walk and later came around a third and scored on a rebase ground out. And he smacks one to left, but Gordon plays it well, makes the catch, two out. You know, fans, the Royals at Fox Sports Kansas City are offering a unique way for fans across the Midwest to enjoy a game at the K. It's the Forever Royal Fan Express. Fans in designated markets will have the opportunity to win a trip to the K. And the next stop is Columbia and Jefferson City on July 23rd. Go to Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. And we've talked to fans who have jumped on that and they've had a blast and made some new friends. I know you've greeted them in the parking lot here at the K. It's a blast. I'm hoping that the time timing can work out again so we can jump on board that next week it comes. Chisholm Hall single to center field last time up and he almost goes to one knee to reach for this breaking ball thrown by Volquez. Well the one category that the Indians can do a little bit better in and that is clutch hitting we talked about their 253 average with runners in scoring position earlier that's ninth in the American League. Chisholm Hall said 288. In there. One ball, two strikes. Cleveland does know how to win, HUD. Last year was an off season. They went 81 and 80, but it was their third straight winning year. You might remember just three years ago, they won 92 games 85 in 2014 and 81 last year. Swung on and missed. He went with that great curveball. And got him to whiff over the top. There you go, Eddie. Stay steady. Down.
back at the K, bottom of the sixth inning. The Cleveland Indians are staying on top of the Royals. The Royals, they need a big hit. Why not this inning for the Sonic Slam? Sixth inning is our Sonic Slam inning with our contestant is Dwayne Mason from Lone Jack, Missouri. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Dwayne will win $2,500. But if the Royals hit a grand slam, Dwayne will win 25 grand from the Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. How about setting the table, Salvi? Good inning to give away some money. Oh, how about it? Lone Jack is on edge. Dwayne needs a jack. Do you right one? Looper towards right, but coming on quickly is Chisenhall for out number one. Notice how shallow Chisenhall is playing tonight. Now, they, the Royals have beat him a couple of times. Dyson hit a ball out there. Cuthbert did. But, you know, I think they're saying, you know, we'll challenge you to hit it over our head. But you can see how shallow he's been playing. So, so has Naquin. So they're going to take away any little doinkers in there. And I how I saw the same thing with Kendris Morales a left handed batter or switch hitter batting from the left side where the left fielder Ramirez was playing deep but the right fielder very shallow. Well they're doing the same thing against Alex Gordon now they're playing him to pull on the ground but they don't think he's going to hit it over their head at all shallow and shallow is Naquin. I mean 10 feet in. That is hit to Ramirez. Two out. Fans vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the Kansas City metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Cuthbert certainly a candidate. He has improved every single month and hitting 333 coming into tonight's ball game, and he's two for two. So we'll have to get Dave Holtzman to update his batting average in the month of July. Meantime, our contestant Dwayne Mason from Lone Jack is looking for one. Just one Lone Jack. Mm -hmm. Cuthbert now hitting 360 in the month of July. So he certainly is a rally house candidate for player of the month. Ah. Sorry, Dwayne Mason. Mm. Nice. Next inning.
Ryan Flynn will get his first start ever as a Royal tomorrow. Ned Yost naming the lefty his starter. We know what we've got in Chris Young. We know what we have in uh, Dylan G. And it's just, uh, you know, seeing what we got in, in, in Brian Flynn. He's been throwing the ball extremely well out of the pin, and uh, we want to give him an opportunity to start. It's been a long time since that, especially with the injury and everything. Uh, a long time since I've had a start and matured a lot since then, so I'm really ready for it. So Brian Flynn, the Wichita State product, an Oklahoma native, will get his first start as a Royal in 13 games out of the pen, a 2-3-9 ERA. His last start in the big leagues, August 7, 2014, for the Marlins. This will be his sixth career start. Thank you, Joel. That ball struck towards left field, but Hooking into foul territory is a room for Alex. No. And to see Flynn in that dugout, that's good for him. Look, he got a smile on his face. He's not out in that bullpen. You know, there's nothing wrong with being in the pen, but every guy wants to be a starter, and he's excited about the opportunity. And he's mainly been a fastball slider guy out of the bullpen, but he'll add the two other pitches that he has in his repertoire and the curve and the changeup. Yep. See what's working for him, but you know he wants early count outs so he can stay in long. He'll be on a pitch count. It's got good stuff. Art sinker. Got to have something out of our fifth starter. It's been a struggle this year. We've had Chris Young out there and Chris Medlin. That's not working right there. Four and fourteen with a seven ERA. One through four guys have done a respectable job. Quite frankly, Kennedy, Duffy, Ventura with three solid starts in Detroit. And the ERA under 3-5. Coach Haber has begun to toss down in the Royals' pen. Yeah, and Edison Volquez has done a nice job tonight. Two runs in six innings. What's wrong with that? That's nothing. Cleveland Indians are averaging right at five runs a game. See, do you know when the, the Royals give Eddie four runs in a game, four runs or more? He is 21 and three as a Royal. Yeah. Yep. Guy get runs. Every pitcher will tell you that. Looks like it got Jeff Nelson, the crew chief. Yeah, it did. Got it good too. Doug Eddings is at first base, Ryan Blakeney at second, and Corey Blazer at third base. And Salvi gave Jeff as much time as he needed to recover by going out and visiting with Volquez, and that's why Jeff didn't quite break it up. There is the quartet here. Bay takes low and it's a 3 2 count. This is a rather patient Indians team. They started the night walking 83 times more than Kansas City. Seen a few long balls struck foul off Volquez off of that curver changeup. Yeah, and Uribe, he's sitting dead red. He, he's looking to pull. I mean, he's everything. Doesn't matter. But he wants that heater. Three and two, he's he's thinking he's going to get it. But he's getting closer and closer. But I mean, careful, he can't just groove it. Oh. Boy, Alex got a good jump on that one. Yeah, he, he nailed it. He was right on it. You could tell he was he was honing in, getting closer and closer. But Alex with a nice running catch. Nice straight line, good jump on the ball, right over his head. Turned that left shoulder and went right to it. Nice play. Volquez and Uribe, he <laughs> look at that. He's saying, you missed it. Now go grab some pine.
Nate Quinn has swung at the first pitch in all three at bats. He lined a single to right field his first time up. And after swinging and missing at the first pitch in the fourth inning, he would later ground out. The runner in scoring position, one for two. Rolls this one to Merrifield. Two out. Panera takes us around the league as we check out some scores around baseball. New York has beaten Baltimore. Beltron three for four with a double. Detroit a final over Minnesota. Upton with a solo home run in the second inning and it holds up. And Chicago beat New York five to one with Rizzo going deep with a three run home run. So the Cubs who had an eight game lead over St. Louis win their 56th game and they're back to 20 games over 500. Fans trying to help Bocas get through this sixth inning. Or the seventh, excuse me, the seventh. He's checking the, looking at Bocas. Remember that, that terrible start he had June 24th against Houston, where he didn't get out of that first inning? This is his fourth straight start now with at least six innings. That was a game where he said, I just could not command the baseball. I couldn't throw it anywhere where I wanted to. Everything was up. How about that off speed? Wow. Perez almost jumped at the baseball and fell across home plate. Oh, yeah. That's a good spot there. Right down the middle. Had a little wrinkle on it. He has thrown 109 pitches. You give up two runs in seven innings, you should win. Mm -hmm. the Royals offense has been quiet. But you know, it's, it, it's, it's been low stress these innings here in the, in the 110 pitches now. I mean, he hasn't been in a lot of trouble. He's kind of doinked him here. Uribe's now Lindor's was not a doink. Lindor he connected for his 11th home run. First inning. Third hitter of the game. Full count at three and two. Right here, Eddie wants to challenge him. Just two seam right over the middle. If he hits it, hope you hit it at somebody. But don't walk him because Ned's on the verge of coming and getting it. He struck him out. There you go. Terrific job by Edinson Volk has seven innings, two runs allowed. Now the Royals offense needs to attack Kluber. Nice job.
excellent game by Edison Volk as he made one mistake and that is our dodge drive of the game. The third batter he faced tonight came inside to Francisco Lindor and this is what happened. Yeah you know what that ball was on the inner half but it was elevated. Now Salvi wanted it down about three inches more but just quick hands you got to credit Lindor that early in the game Volquez already we, we talked about allowing 15 runs in the first inning this season. Look, that one mistake but everything else is good. Dave Island has got to be pleased with with the outing and uh, like I said that's a fourth straight outing now he's gone six plus innings after that. June 24th game against Houston where he didn't get out of the first. Meantime Kluber last time he was at Kauffman Stadium he gave up a career high tying eight runs and a 9 4 loss. Well he has pitched shutout baseball through six. He's at 80 pitches. Strike one. Paula wanted that he normally is aggressive early. Got him a pitch up. It's exactly what Dale Swain wants out of his hitters against Kluber. Hasn't been happening. They've been missing. And a little bit too aggressive on Kluber. Swinging at pitches that aren't aren't their pitches. And this is not good news if it's if he continues on this trend here. Third time through the order, just a 202 average. I mean, their rotation's fantastic. That'll All be. five starting pitchers hut in the top 20 ERA. Yep, there's no let up. Offense is going to be tested. And that was not a strike. Nope. He now has 130 strikeouts this year. The AL leader is David Price with 141. He's tied with Justin Verlander with 130 for third after Price and Archer. Here is Merrifield who's 0 for 2 with a ground out and pop up. Whitley's been aggressive his first several swings against Kluber all night long. Ground out to the third baseman and it'll pop up to the first baseman. That was there for him and just did not square it up. Yeah, and he's just a click behind. Plus, it was elevated, but that's the one they want to look for. That's, that's exactly what Dale was talking about before the game. Get to see it up, but you can't miss him. Teased him away. The same pitch, pretty much the same location, just inches off the plate. Kidding me? His his command, he puts it exactly where he wants it. Lee door two out. Our AT&T high-speed replay. It's Gerard Dyson back in inning number three when he hit one over the head of Chisholm Hall. Yeah, there it was. Shallow outfielder, hustling hard, playing to it, keeping Dyson from an inside the park home run. Foul. The only taxing inning was the first when he threw 22 pitches. Well, 
Yeah, but you know, talking about his command, he just walked two tonight. That was Morales in the first inning and Hosmer in the third inning, and he pitched around both of those guys. Especially Hosmer in that situation with Dyson at third base. It tells you he's able to put that ball exactly where he wants it. He only threw Hosmer one strike in that entire at bat, but the rest of them were way off and in. That's the whole key to pitching. It's all about location. Command. It helps if you have some velocity and you can blow it by guys when you do make a mistake. But if you don't make any mistakes and you're hitting your spots and you're spinning that ball just where you want it, you're not going to hit him. Now the Royals have helped Kluber tonight by swinging at some bad pitches. There's no doubt about it. But you know you, you got to credit Kluber too. He's, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to throw him a strike. He's not going to. Dyson works a two out walk. Only the third walk issued by Kluber in six and two thirds innings. Mm -hmm. Now the tying run will come to the plate in Alcides Escobar. And fans, we don't want you to miss the fourth round of T shirt Tuesday tomorrow when the Royals host Cleveland. The first 10,000 fans at the gates receive a T shirt featuring a forever Royal pennant presented by Phillips 66. To see all T-shirt Tuesday designs and get tickets, visit royals.com slash T-shirt Tuesday. Escobar up. Dyson at first base has speed. Why not go? Two outs, take a chance. Dyson, they say, out at second base, but will the Royals challenge? The Indians are running off the field. And Ned Yo said, not so fast. But the Royals did lose their challenge, although we're in the seventh inning. And uh, hey, look. Let's have a couple of looks. Yeah, you know what? Uh, uh, the, the Royals are, are going ahead and pressing. Did he get that tag on? He uh, did. He got it on him. And Roberto Perez coming out, throwing out a base runner and Gerard Dyson. Good throw. To you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers. Visit us for great prices on the all new 2016 Malibu. Buy Panera Bread, food as it should be, with 24 Kansas City metro locations. And buy Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. Here at Kauffman Stadium, Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery, and Luke Hochaver coming on. He is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Strike one. Volquez turning out a nice outing. Seven innings pitch, just four hits, a couple runs. Coach taking over. Just shut him down. Hold her there. Big curveball, cut fastball, four seam fastball. 
mid 90s when he's working it. Coach will take that one, even though it, it's a little bit more painful out than, he's, than he would rather have gotten. But look, at least the ball didn't carry him off of him, and he had to run hard and try to throw out Santana. But I think he's going to be all right. Let's see where it got him. Little one hopper right off of the, the, sh the left shin, looked like underneath the knee. Picks it up. So, how about? Phillips 66. What's left in the tank? Bullpen, last 11 games, hasn't been a lot in the tank. Hoping they can fill it up, get back out there and, and shut those opponents down because that's a strength of their game. You know, the Royals they, at bullpen, they're not used to them springing a leak. And Kipnis with his first hit of the night. So he is one for four. And Hoach Abreu will have to face Francisco Lindor. Lindor with the home run in the first and grounded out in the third and struck out against Volquez in the sixth. Volquez, two runs allowed in seven innings of work, six strikeouts. And a home run by Lindor was his. First in his last 18 games. Now he rolls us back to Hoach. They've got one. There you go. Now they're starting to fill the tank back up. Routine. He'll come back here. Over Kansas City, and it's time for our premier Mazda game break. Justin Upton went deep. That was the only run needed, and uh, the Tigers won nothing victory over the Minnesota Twins. Matt Boyd pitched awfully well for the Tigers in that one, going six shutout innings, but Upton's homer won it. And there's a look at the American League Central. The Royals right now eight games back of Cleveland, but they need to rally. To cut it to seven because the tribe came in awfully hot, even though they had lost seven of 12 since that brilliant 14 game win streak. And a little, sure. little something going on here. 
Yeah, that was odd. He, he, he started to warm up. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I think maybe he got a cramp in his right calf. That's exactly what it looked like. Yep, he's done. Well, you know, he's smiling, so that's what that was, is a cramp. You know, when that happens, anything else, another injury can occur, especially when you have a leg injury. Look at him, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm tight, and it's cramping. And with this kind of weather, I'm not surprised. Well, we have a Chevy call to the bullpen. We'll be right back. Royals baseball is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri, so play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. Corey Kluber came out of the ball game because of that Cramp in his right calf, and I'm sure the Royals are glad to see him leave after he shut them out for seven innings and really looked solid. Eight strikeouts. He was the winning pitcher in the All Star game. There's Mickey Calloway, yeah, pitching you, coach. You, you, you can't mess around. You know, you get a cramp like that, and, you, and it bothers you, and you, you keep throwing through that. You're going to develop another little owie somewhere else, and it could be in your arm, and that's not good. And this is an area where Cleveland must improve if they're going to win the Central and move on in postseason. Their bullpen is rather average. And Brian Shaw, who's a setup guy, a 3 7 2 ERA. So they could be a, a buyer for a, a reliever yep. out there. Never know. Shaw cut fastball. He'll go mid 90s, low to mid 90s. Cuts that fastball slider curve and a change in it and a funky arm angle. He throws across his body. Salvador Perez solved him back in June, though. And that was a big home run that allowed the Royals to come from behind and beat Cleveland when they swept the tribe in three straight. Salvi will be coming up fourth in this inning. I mean, he, he is a cut throw, cutter throwing pitcher. I mean, he, he has a lot of natural cut, but then when he wants to, he can make it look like a big curve. There it is there. And with the drop on it, HUD, it's surprising to see it at 94 miles an hour. It's got like a lot of that's natural action. Off the glove, two of a rebate, no chance. And the tying run is coming up. How many times have we seen those type of base hits turn into rallies? Maybe the Royals have something left here late. The minute he touched that ball with his glove, there was no chance for Uribe to score Escobar as he smelt that knock. Any way you can.
Shaw has given up seven home runs this year three to left handers. Ball one. They're going to try to cut him inside tie him up so he can't get his arms extended. Two for five with a double in his career against Shaw. Outfield playing shallow in center field and right like they have the entire game. Back up the middle. First and second. Nobody out. And no chance to advance Escobar to third because of Naquin playing so shallow. But how about this hut with these guys on Morales would be coming up but apparently Kendris with that ball struck off of his front foot. Morales will not bat and it's Christian Colon. Eibner was in the on deck circle was ready to walk up but they've chosen Colon to probably drop the bunt. That's probably what they're thinking Fizz. They had Eibner out there to see if he could maybe pop one out of the ballpark. But now that they you know this is not very many times in the American League do you use a pinch hitter because of the designated hitter. But Morales having something going on I believe it probably could be that top of that foot because Fizz there's no protection and he found that ball directly off of his right foot. And so now Cologne's coming in obvious situation here. And Cologne not known for his power but he can do the little things. He does not have a sacrifice hit this year but hasn't played that much. Here is that foul ball struck off of Kendris's front foot. Now we're not exactly sure this is it but this is a good reason for it. Ouch. You don't have your feet you got nothing. So let's see what they're going to do here. If you're a hitter you got to have that base. Colon two sacrifices in his career. Get the Page first ball one. one. Get the first one down. It doesn't have to be a strike. Just bunt it and get it out of the way. Uribe, he's he's in. Ideally, with the first baseman crashing, you want the third baseman to feel the ball. That would vacate third and get them take the out. So try to drop it right a little bit right there, right on that third baseline there. Make him come get it. Not too close to the pitcher. Outside 2 and 0. Oh. And normally you're going to get a lot of fastballs in that situation because it's the toughest pitch to bunt. Any slider, cutter, those balls going down, it already helps the hitter get the ball on the ground. Was in shock the center fielder playing shallow. We talked about it. Look at this, the old butcher boy. <laughs> That's a beauty. In timely fashion. Cut her down the middle. Thought he was a getting a bunt. Uh-uh. And he turns on it. Ties the game. That is a pinch hit deluxe. But were the Royals too aggressive with nobody out? He he should have held it second base. There's no question about it. Salvador Perez pops it up. They got him by a mile at third but look you know what the damage has been done they'll take it. For a terrific at bat by Christian Cologne. With a positive count. Now he didn't look at Jershley when he's running watch him now he's his plays in front of him here. He's making this decision up on his own right here and he's just made the wrong decision because they got him by plenty. If he stays at second base, the Royals have a bigger chance with the meat of their order coming up. But look, for your first pinch hit of the season, to be, to have a big hit like that on a butcher boy, that was beautiful. And he doesn't say, you know, doesn't have a sacrifice bun all year. The element of surprise got the tribe there. 2-0 count to Alex Gordon. 
How about that? Maybe Shaw a little distracted. He's had trouble at Kauffman Stadium. We told you about the game in June where Salvador Perez hit the home run that beat him in the eighth. And now he's falling behind Gordo 3 and 0. You know, it's interesting. Had Cologne sacrificed him successfully, the first base would have been open. They probably would have put Salvador Perez on. But not going to happen now. Cologne already did the damage. You swinging away here? Why not? Absolutely. Outside, though, ball four. Right-hander is up in Cuthbert. Callaway's going to visit Shaw. Royals with three straight right-handers: Cuthbert, Orlando, and Merrifield. There is a right-hander warming in the Indians bullpen, and it is Cody Allen who has just started to warm up. And remember, Cody Allen is their closer. But Zach McAllister, it's Jeff Manship, I beg your pardon. It's not Cody Allen. It's Jeff Manship. But this is we usually Rex be a Zach McAllister situation, but he's at the DL. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a butcher boy, that's what they call that fake bunt and pull back and hit, like I saw Cologne just now. I mean, you see that once in a while, but man, by a pitcher, but never in a situation like this late in the game, in an important game. It's game one of three. And Cologne just masterfully drove that ball over the center fielder's head. Beautiful. I don't stop there. Strike to Cuthbert, who is two for three with a single and a double. Now Chisholm Hall not nearly as shallow as when Cuthbert doubled over his head back in the fourth. Rebe really tight to the line at third, playing no doubles. Big swing. One and two. Alex goes the pitches a check swing. He did not go so it's a steal for Gordon. How about that the Royals. Steal just their fifth base in the last 21 games. So they need a single to take the lead. Ooh, barely missed outside. Chesler hitting 286 with runners in scoring position has Terry Francona a little bit nervous here. Cutters off the plate. Cuthbert can look opposite field. Alex needs to get a good secondary lead here. Good rip. Boy, he had a full rip on a 3 2 count. Too. Sure did. And it was there, too. It was a cutter right down the middle. Ooh. He missed it. Man, that's the one. Ooh. Cuthbert with a nice average of the runner in scoring position. And Paulo Orlando has hit 377 with runners out there. So the guys are, Ned's got coming up or have some. Everybody good in Kauffman Stadium is hoping he'll come out to protect the lead in the top of the ninth. 17 Wade Davis. Gordon represents the go ahead run. Well, he's a good battler. 30 RBIs by the rookie. Remember, he missed the first month of the season. Called up when Mike Ustakis went out with that knee injury. Chisholm Hall in right has four outfield assists. Naquin has one in center. 
pitches and Hall is shallow. Just barely missed outside. Back to back walks to Gordon and Cuthbert. How much longer is Terry Francona Kona going to go with Shaw? No, he's not. So it will be Jeff Manship coming out for Cleveland. But the Royals have come back to tie this game. Royals have tied it dramatically after Lindor gave them the first inning lead. Kluber went seven, came out of this inning with a calf injury, and Christian Colon tied it up. That two run double on the butcher boy. Well, you know, that's a couple different terms are used in the game for it. Whenever you square around like that, okay, they you call it slug bunt or a butcher boy, pull it back, short compact swing, and then shock the house. Especially the center fielder Naguin. He had no idea that Cologne was going to hit one out there. After squaring the bunt the first two times, he pulls it back and shorts it up and hits a drive. Naguin was shocked. He's thinking he don't even know how to get to the ball. He's thinking, wow, what? How did that ball get shot out there? What a pinch hit in the first of the season for Cologne. Now Jeff Manship, who has been tough on right-handers this year, righty's only batting 190 and more impressive of late. His last 11 games, opponents three for 28. Well, he's similar to Shaw. He throws a cut fastball, and he'll sink his fastball curve and a good slider. So a lot of pitches going away to from Paulo here. Now the Royals have outscored their opponents by 29 runs in the eighth or later. And that's a that's a wide margin of runs, so they get a lot of their runs late, especially here at the K in front of this energetic, beautiful crowd. Line drive, base hit, left field. Here comes Gordon. The throw to the plate. Safe. They want to stay away from him. He left it on the outside part of the plate. He knew it was coming. He hooked it. He said, forget about right field. The game's on the line, and I'm the guy. That's right. Hitting 377 with runners in scoring position. Right man, right spot. Ramirez, great throw. Alex, better slide. Boy, he tried to drop his knees down, but 
Alex went right around him and was able to slap that left hand down. Orlando went to second base on the throw. Yeah, there's a little bit of late life. And we talked about it earlier when Escobar got that base hit, infield hit off of Shaw's glove. How many times do we see Royals come back and they start rallies like that? Merrifield takes outside, 2-0. Hosmer with the base hit. And then Cologne shocked the house with tying it up with that butcher boy double. Center field, right field, shallow. 3-0. Yeah. Look, get greedy. Two outs. Add on. Give the waiter a little bit of insurance. I mean, 3-0, green light. Who cares? First base open. Why not? Now, if it's your pitch, what are you saying? Middle in? I'm going right back up the middle with it if I'm convicted to swing 3-0. I was thinking where the location of the pitch, if it's you, where you want it, middle in or middle in. But you know what, though, Fizz, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 56 <laughs> years old, man. I couldn't do nothing with that right now. I'm talking if you're Whitley. Okay, Whitley, yeah, he'd like to drive one middle in, but he's better middle away. He likes to go that That's why I field. asked. All right, you get me worked up. Take Outside, the walk. ball four, bases are loaded for Gerard Dyson. Three walks in the inning. One scored off Rancona, a painful one. Gordon scoring on Orlando's hit. The Royals trailed 2 0 coming into the bottom of the eighth. Single by Escobar, single by Hosmer, double by Cologne to tie it. Walk, walk, hit, walk. And here's Dyson, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Remember, Royals don't have an extra base hit this year with the bases loaded. They may now look at this down the line. Grand slam. Are you kidding me?
a big swing by a little guy with speed. Sure was nice. And great timing for your first career Grand Slam. Royals up by one, looking for some insurance. Last team in Major League Baseball that hasn't got an extra base hit with them loaded. Look at Haas. <laughs> look at the, look at the, two, the two stars on the Royals there digging Gerard Dyson's piece of work there. There is joy in Mudville. The mighty Dyson went deep. <laughs> and Davis will sit down. Chris Young now with a five run Royal lead. will get the call and Mike Napoli is the batter. And there is strike one. Ooh, and man. Napoli jawing at home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. Sure, they're chap. Dyson's last home run was last September 6th. Against the White Sox. That struck pretty well. Orlando's pretty fast and he runs down Mike Napoli's drive. You know we asked that sprint trivia question earlier tonight for American League players active with 17 or more home runs in nine straight seasons Mike Napoli of course one of those guys and Miguel Cabrera we were talking about being another we did not mention Evan Longoria we did mention David Ortiz week so we got HUD three of the four. And Evans got like 20 or 21 home runs. I know he had a two home run game yesterday. Yep. What a beautiful thing to have power. Well, once again, it all begins with a quality start. And Edinson Volquez will not get the decision, but he kept the team in so they could have that. Incredible seventh. There's a line drive to center field by Jose Ramirez. One on. Well, you know, we talked about the great starting pitching of the Cleveland Indians, and, and they are great. But the bullpen, some question marks on that pin. And for those excellent starters that are all sitting right there, standing there watching, you know, they've got to have some trust at the back end of that bullpen, or they won't win. Lonnie Chisholm Hall one for three. That was a single back in the fourth inning. Royals with seven runs on ten hits. Indians two runs six hits. Chris Young slider down. Slider fastball keeper down. Chen Ming Wong up just in case. Young can't find his rhythm. And Young's one of those guys, if you see him just once, he's really, really been difficult. Because he gives you that down angle from 6'10. Yeah, now Young, look, he's got 66 strikeouts in 61 innings exactly. this year. So he's he's serviceable out of that bullpen. He's trying to find it right now, though. I don't know if Ned Yost is gonna wait around for him either. Chisholm Hall taking. It's a 3 1 count. Chris was one of the Royals' top pitchers in their World Championship season last year, both as a starter and reliever. That ball whistled down the right field line and will get to the corner. Ramirez racing to third. They will hold him there. It's a double for Chisholm Hall. And I just saw Dave Island move down towards the bullpen phone. Wade Davis is back up. Well, you know, you, you would think that this is a good time and a good situation to get Young in the game. Five run lead. Want to get him some work. But it's just not working so far here. Now he's got an out, and the ball was hit 
deep to the 387 mark in right center field. Apollo tracked it down. I don't know. Well, that certainly was to allow Wade Davis to get ready just in case they need to bring him in in a save situation. That's why those tack on runs so important. The Royals took that 3 2 lead and they pushed it to five on a grand slam home run. But quite frankly, if it's a one run game, Davis is already out there. Right. But you know that you know insurance is, is important. Yeah. There's no no doubt about that. But you know no one expected a grand slam from Gerard Dyson. Foul off of Salvi. Royals trying to cut that Cleveland lead to seven games. I caught a little bit of the shoulder and the mask. Better than getting a direct shot to the mask. Boy, he's always in a good mood. <laughs> Picking everybody up. Communicating with the ump so important. Run will score, but Merrifield will get the second out. Tyler Naquin will step to the plate. The one area where the Royals have the edge over the Indians is the bullpen. Royals with a team ERA of three is their bullpen, and that's tops still in the American League. The Indians sixth, three three eight. Two balls and no strikes to Tyler Naquin. Fans are getting a little bit restless here. They're got their let's go Royals chant. After a huge seven run eighth inning. Young right there. Get back in that count. His best pitch is a slider, but he needs to be in front. About that. Good fastball and make one. Swings right through and it's a 3 2 count, two out. Man at third. Royals by four. Just low. And here comes Ned Yost. This will be a safe situation for Wade Davis. We'll be right back.
Royals lead it 7-3. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals baseball club. Wade Davis comes on for his 20th save this year. Marvelous ERA at 1-1-9. And he will face a pinch hitter and Abraham Almonte who just came off the suspended list. He was suspended for 80 games for PED use. Ball one. Davis four seam straight fastball. He'll go reach up to 97. He's got a cut fastball. He'll throw a little bit maybe around the mid 90s sometimes a little bit lower. A big overhand curveball. Runner takes second base, but the Royals don't care. No steal, indifference. The only man that matters is the guy on deck, and that is Carlos Santana. Popped it up. Perez back. Can he get there? Yes, he does. Huge homestand begins with a huge comeback. Waiter, check please. Dyson with a grand slam home run. The Royals with a seven run eighth. Davis with his 20th save. And how about this great play by Salvador Perez? Man, I'll tell you what, he hustled after that. He wanted it in the worst way. He says, well, you know what? No more pitch. Let's put an end to this game. Look at that. What an end the game. Got Fans dirty. love him. Why not? He is something. How about that late heroics? Again, 18th comfort behind win by the world champs. Well, it started with Ken Corey Kluber leaving the game because of the cramp injury. Yeah. Right? And that swung the uh, momentum. It sure did. Seventh, coming out for the eighth, and he had 95 pitches thrown. Okay, then there it goes. Escobar gets it going with the little infield hit. How many times have we seen that? Hosmer follows up with a lousy single. Now, this is the play of the year so far. The Butcher Boy. How about that? That was so clutch by Colon. And we all know he can come through in the clutch, which was evident last year in the World Series win against the Mets. And Paulo Orlando, he's the one who hit the go-ahead RBI here. Alex Gordon with a great slide. Late. Got it in there. Here they come, and then they weren't done. How about some insurance? Gerard Dyson's first career grand slam, and the first time all year with him loaded up, the Royals got an extra base hit. How about that? Call the cops. It's been beautiful. <laughs> You're having fun. Well, Joel is with two of the stars. Yeah, I guess who those stars are, Gerard Dyson, Christian Cologne, and I think Rusty Koontz just said that's what power do. Gerard Dyson, first career grand slam. Tell me about that swing. I... How'd that feel? Felt great. I agree. Anyway. Tell me about that grand slam. You know, I didn't expect it to go out. <laughs> Come on, man. Here, go ahead. No, uh, I wasn't expecting that type of result, but uh, I take it. I take it. But uh, hey, keep on going. No, it was a great win for the team. You know, everybody did a job. How to feel? How to feel? Feel good, baby. I mean, go ahead. If you if you want to ask him something, by all means, go ahead. No, I did. I did. All right, you got it. You, no, you don't leave yet. This is a big moment for you. It's your first home run since last year. Your first Grand Slam. The people want to love on you here. I love the people too. <laughs> all right, last question. Then we'll get to to CC here. Just the energy and, and to be able to get that swagger back in that inning. The Indians were were winning the game, but just describe that feeling of, of, of climbing back into this thing. But first off, it feels good to be at home. And uh, Cleveland is a tough bunch over there, so every time we play against them, it's a dog fight. And uh, we did a great job pitching, offense, and we took care of Benton.
Can I have the mic back? All right, you, you can go. Thanks, Gerard. Yeah, he, he knows how to play to the camera. But the guy that got it all started was Christian Cologne with the pinch hit. Cece, at what point did you realize you were going in? We saw Eibner up on deck, Morales had gone out. What was the thought process there? Well, I was just ready, you know, like um, always just uh, for the moment. And I think, um, you know, I was calling on to bunt in that situation. And, uh, you know, I got in there and it was 2-0. And I, uh, I just, you know, trying to be aggressive, making something happen and uh, not just giving it to an out right there. So you were showing bunt, you pull back and find the gap. What did you see? Well, I mean, as soon as I hit it, I knew I hit it pretty good. Uh, I was just hoping it wasn't right at him. But, uh, you know, just sitting here talking to the coaches, Pedro, about the different situations that could happen in the game, and uh, it presented itself, and uh, I'm glad it worked out. Last thing, how electric was that inning as you batted around and getting 38,000-plus behind you? This is what we're used to here. You know, this is what we do. It's come back, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. Great job tonight. Thank you. Christian Colon, Gerard Dyson, and a very energetic crowd. Guys. What a game. Royals down 2 nothing. Bottom of the eighth inning, 38,000 fans roaring. And Salvador Perez. <laughs> this was after the Dyson Grand Slam home run. Absolutely rejoicing. Dyson got it. The Salvi splash. Thank you.